Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. <clears throat> we have the overnight GFS run, and um, with the developments that we saw this afternoon, I just want to take you along because I don't think that this is still um, a final verdict on it has been reached yet, and I'm going to show you why. First off, I want to go back to the day run, okay? And if you look at the day run here, here's that deep trough that's forming in the middle of the country, pretty far to the west, actually. Uh, and, and here's that southern stream system that uh, you we were watching. And what happens is that that northern stream energy just completely overpowered it, <clears throat> where it really becomes the dominant feature. And it wound up taking um, a low, if we uh, look back from on the surface from the day run. Whoops. All right, just give me a second here, guys. Okay, so here's the surface and what it looked like. And you took a low just off the coast. You had uh, this other low. <clears throat> this is in response to that deep upper trough, that Great Lakes system. And then it just kind of gets together. And the European had the same idea, but it was just further left because it just really just made one deep trough out of that uh, system. And you really lost the southern feature to some degree. Now, we're going to jump to the late afternoon run because that one was where we started to see some differences on the model and here's the main difference for the same time frame and you can see that southern stream feature stays very distinct and actually the model showed a second one here which may or may not be real it looks like it probably wouldn't be but here's that feature there and it kind of loses it but the important thing is that trough in, on this run was much more positively tilted. Uh, rather than swinging around, it was much more progressive that it would move along. And this made cold air on this run much more important. So you wound up with this idea, which was a low that comes out of the Gulf, runs up the Appalachians, and then redevelops on the coast. And you can see some cold air is a high that's kind of necked down and from eastern Canada into New England that sort of necks down and builds in some cold air. Not a lot, but maybe enough. And then we have a low that goes out, and then it had that second system that came up. Now, tonight's run is actually different from both the prior runs in that we have, instead of having this idea of two systems, which really, when you think about it, is a little hard to believe, if only because of the fact that there's only so much room in the atmosphere, but I'm going to go back to that upper feature now and show you the difference. And you, what you can see here is here's that southern system almost for the same time frame, but not quite. But you can see the northern trough coming into play. But here's that distinct feature in the southern system. And it stays distinct as this trough now. Instead of making it a, making a trough out here at around 95, the trough is more along or east of, of 90. And it still has some, it hasn't really wrapped up. It's still kind of progressive. So by that time, the, the uh, southern system has lifted up to off the New Jersey coastal off. And then that trough just strengthens like crazy, brings down very cold air for uh, the latter part of next week and uh, into the following weekend. even has another disturbance in the northern flow that kind of drops in to reinforce it. But let's show you what it does on the surface because, again, I don't think this is the final resolution of all this. I think we have much more to more changes to look at over time, but it actually takes one deep low just up the right along the immediate coast. Now, obviously, this track would be rain for the coast with some heavy snows for inland areas, uh, well inland, uh, upstate New York, and into northern Pennsylvania and central and northern New England. But it wraps up a very deep low and then very cold air, bitter air actually. Uh, that's a that is very that is bitter cold that runs into Ohio, Kentucky, and into West Virginia, and then it translates over to the coast. So uh, we would see uh, probably the coldest air we've seen since the beginning of January when we had that one shot. And then as we uh, move along through time, when that second reinforcing arm comes around, now who knows if this is real or not at this point, but the idea is that each run is, is taking us on a different trip. Uh, with all of this, and I'm I, I'm still pretty sure that we're going to see some more changes. Now I don't know what the Europeans going to do with all this, and how it resolves it, but it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out over time. Because 
Uh, this is a pretty dynamic feature. That's a, a really strong surface storm that it forms and takes up into western Massachusetts right along the coast. If you have a little more progression, okay, in other words, if this northern trough is uh, just a little slower in getting its act organized, it might allow more room for this low to track a little further to the east. Or the other argument is that if it white wide, if it winds up intensifying too much, then you can wind up with a deep low that goes even further west. So we don't have any resolution. I didn't expect to have any final resolution on this from this run, but um, there is a lot of dynamics here. And the end result is because of that cross polar flow that's being shown. If this is right, it gets bitter cold here for a couple of days going into the uh, end of next week. And that kind of makes sense given what we saw uh, with the um, cross polar flow that I was showing you back the other day. I'm going to switch over to the large um, North America view. Now, this only goes out to 10, uh, day 10 right now because it hasn't updated yet to day 16. But you can see it here, how it evolves. And here we are in our ridge. This is our front that comes through and, and is through um, <clears throat> for Wednesday. And, and then you can see how you have this kind of colder shot that comes in for the weekend. And here's that northern stream system. Here's the southern stream system. And that southern stream system stays very distinct while this trough starts to strengthen. And then that and, and one of the differences is uh, from the prior run is that this kind of made it a separate arm that for it made a second storm off the coast for behind this one. Now it's not doing that. There isn't really enough room uh, for that to happen. You have part of it digging here and then you have this westerly flow here. So you don't have the, the same kind of energy focused on the coast like you did earlier today. And then that trough just really strengthens like crazy as it uh, go, moves to the coast and then starts to lift out. Uh, you see this vortex here is still in place. you got a cold polar flow out of Canada that uh, is established here. Uh, cutoff low in the Gulf of Alaska. You have a big ridge out in the west. So all the signatures are here for uh, everything that we've been talking about on and off. No guarantees it's going to work out this way. So we'll just wait to see what the rest of the overnight runs do. In the meantime, you make sure that you have yourselves a great Tuesday, and we will, uh, of course, post updates on this throughout the day and see where these models are taking us.